The United States Census is a decennial census mandated by Article I, Section 2 of the United States Constitution, which states, "...representatives and direct taxes shall be apportioned among the several states according to their respective numbers." The actual enumeration shall be made within three years after the first meeting of the Congress of the United States, and within every subsequent term of ten years." Section 2 of the Fourteenth Amendment states, "...representatives shall be apportioned among the several states according to their respective numbers, counting the whole number of persons in each state, excluding Indians not taxed." The United States Census Bureau, officially the Bureau of the Census, as defined in Title 13 U.S.C. Section 11, is responsible for the United States Census. The Bureau of the Census is part of the United States Department of Commerce. The first census after the American Revolution was taken in 1790 under Secretary of State Thomas Jefferson. There have been 22 federal censuses since that time. The current national census was held in 2010. The next census is scheduled for 2020 and will be largely conducted using the Internet. For years between the decennial censuses, the Census Bureau issues estimates made using surveys and statistical models, in particular, the American Community Survey. Title 13 of the United States Code governs how the census is conducted and how its data is handled. Information is confidential as per 13 U.S.C. Section 9. Refusing or neglecting to answer the census is punishable by fines of $100. For a property or business agent to fail to provide correct names for the census is punishable by fines of $500. And for a business agent to provide false answers for the census is punishable by fines of $10,000, pursuant to 13 U.S.C. Section 221-224. The United States Census is a population census, which is distinct from the U.S. Census of Agriculture, which is no longer the responsibility of the Census Bureau. It is also distinct from local censuses conducted by some states or local jurisdictions. Procedure Decennial U.S. Census figures are based on actual counts of persons dwelling in U.S. residential structures. They include citizens, non-citizen legal residents, non-citizen long-term visitors and illegal residents. The Census Bureau bases its decision about whom to count on the concept of usual residents. Usual residents, a principle established by the Census Act of 1790, is defined as the place a person lives and sleeps most of the time. The Census Bureau uses special procedures to ensure that those without conventional housing are counted, however, data from these operations are not considered as accurate as data obtained from traditional procedures. The Census also uses hot deck imputation to assign data to housing units where occupation status is unknown. This practice has effects across many areas, but is seen by some as controversial. However, the practice was ruled constitutional by the U.S. Supreme Court in Utah v. Evans. Certain American citizens living overseas are specifically excluded from being counted in the census even though they may vote. Only Americans living abroad who are federal employees military and, civilian and their dependents living overseas with them are counted. Private U.S. citizens living abroad who are not affiliated with the federal government either as employees or their dependents will not be included in the overseas counts. These overseas counts are used solely for reapportioning seats in the U.S. House of Representatives. According to the Census Bureau, Census Day has been April 1 since 1930. Previously, from 1790 to 1820, the census counted the population as of the first Monday in August. It moved to June in 1830, June 2 in 1890, April 15 in 1910, and January 1 in 1920. Topic. Controversy The Census Bureau estimates that in 1970 over 6% of blacks went uncounted, whereas only around 2% of whites went uncounted. Democrats often argue that modern sampling techniques should be used so that more accurate and complete data can be inferred. Republicans often argue against such sampling techniques, stating the U.S. Constitution requires an actual enumeration 
for apportionment of House seats, and that political appointees would be tempted to manipulate the sampling formulas. Groups like the Prison Policy Initiative assert that the census practice of counting prisoners as residents of prisons, not their pre incarceration addresses, leads to misleading information about racial demographics and population numbers. In 2010, Jamie Grant, then director of the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force's Policy Institute, thought of the idea of a bright pink sticker for people to stick on their census envelope which had a form for them to check a box for either lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender or straight ally, which her group called queering the census. Although the sticker was unofficial and the results were not added to the census, she and others hope the 2020 census will include such statistics. In 2015, Laverne Cox called for transgender people to be counted in the census. On March 26, 2018, the U.S. Department of Commerce announced plans to re include a citizenship question in the 2020 census questionnaire, which has not been included on the long form since 1950 but was part of the short form starting in 1910 until its removal in 2010. The citizenship question will be the same as the one that is asked on the yearly American Community Survey. Acts. Proponents of including the question claimed it is necessary to gather an accurate statistical count, while opponents claimed it might suppress responses and therefore lead to an inaccurate count. The state of California is suing the Trump administration arguing that the proposed citizenship question is unconstitutional and will intimidate immigrants, resulting in inaccurate data on minority communities. History Censuses had been taken prior to the Constitution's ratification. In the early 17th century, a census was taken in Virginia, and people were counted in nearly all of the British colonies that became the United States. Throughout the years, the country's needs and interests became more complex. This meant that statistics were needed to help people understand what was happening and have a basis for planning. The content of the decennial census changed accordingly. In 1810, the first inquiry on manufactures, quantity and value of products occurred, in 1840, inquiries on fisheries were added, and in 1850, the census included inquiries on social issues, such as taxation, churches, pauperism, and crime. The censuses also spread geographically, to new states and territories added to the Union, as well as to other areas under U.S. sovereignty or jurisdiction. There were so many more inquiries of all kinds in the census of 1880 that almost a full decade was needed to publish all the results. In response to this, the census was mechanized in 1890, with tabulating machines made by Herman Hollerith. This reduced the processing time to two and a half years. For the first six censuses, enumerators recorded only the names of the heads of household and a general demographic accounting of the remaining members of the household. Beginning in 1850, all members of the household were named on the census. The first slave schedules were also completed in 1850, with the second and last in 1860. Censuses of the late 19th century also included agricultural and industrial schedules to gauge the productivity of the nation's economy. Mortality schedules taken between 1850 and 1880 captured a snapshot of life spans and causes of death throughout the country. The first nine censuses were conducted by U.S. Marshals before the Census Bureau was created. Appointed U.S. Marshals of each judicial district hired assistant marshals to conduct the actual enumeration. The census enumerators were typically from the village or neighborhood and often knew the residents. Before enabling self-identification on the censuses, the U.S. Census Bureau relied on local people to have some knowledge of residents. Racial classification was made by the census enumerator in these decades, rather than by the individual. Topic. Respondent confidentiality One purpose of the census is to divide the House seats by population. Furthermore as with any Census Bureau survey the data provides a beginning for allocation of resources. In addition, collected data are used in aggregate for statistical purposes. Replies are obtained from individuals and establishments only to enable the compilation of such general statistics. The confidentiality of these replies is very important. By law, no one—neither the census takers nor any other Census Bureau employee—is permitted to reveal identifiable information about any person, household, or business. 
Without such protections, those living without documentation in the United States would be deterred from submitting census data. By law, Pub. L. 95-416, 92 Stat. 915, enacted October 5, 1978, individual decennial census records are sealed for 72 years, a number chosen in 1952 as slightly higher than the average female life expectancy, 71.6. The individual census data most recently released to the public is the 1940 census, released on April 2, 2012. Aggregate census data are released when available. Topic: <laughs> Historical FBI use of data. Under the administration of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, the Federal Bureau of Investigation (FBI), using primarily census records, compiled 1939 to 1941 the Custodial Detention Index (CDI) on citizens, enemy aliens, and foreign nationals who might be dangerous. The Second War Powers Act of 1941 repealed the legal protection of confidential census data, which was not restored until 1947. This information facilitated the internment of Japanese Americans. Following the Japanese attack on the U.S. at Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, and the internment of Italian and German Americans following the United States' entry into World War II, in 1980, four FBI agents went to the Census Bureau's Colorado Springs office with warrants to seize census documents, but were forced to leave with nothing. Courts upheld that no agency, including the FBI, has access to census data. Data analysis The census records data specific to individual respondents are not available to the public until 72 years after a given census was taken, but aggregate statistical data derived from the census are released as soon as they are available. Every census up to and including 1940 is currently available to the public and can be viewed on microfilm released by the National Archives and Records Administration, the official keeper of archived federal census records. Complete online census records can be accessed for no cost from National Archives facilities and many libraries, and a growing portion of the census is freely available from noncommercial online sources. Census microdata for research purposes are available for censuses from 1850 forward through the Integrated Public Use Microdata Series and scanned copies of each of the decennial census questionnaires are available online from many websites. Computerized aggregate data describing the characteristics of small geographic areas for the entire period from 1790 to 2010 are available from the National Historical Geographic Information System. Topic. Regions and divisions The Bureau recognizes four census regions within the United States and further organizes them into nine divisions. These regions are groupings of states that subdivide the United States for the presentation of data. They should not be construed as necessarily being thus grouped owing to any geographical, historical, or cultural bonds. Topic. See also Census designated place CDP a populated community that lacks a separate municipal government combined statistical area CSA an area that combines adjacent micro SAS and MSAs dual labs list of US states by historical population state level US census data 1790 to 2010 in table form race and ethnicity in the United States census state censuses in the United States of America United States Metropolitan Area MSA, an area that includes adjacent communities to major cities United States Micropolitan Area micro -saw, an urban area based around a core city or town with a population of 10,000 to 49,999 Notes Topic. Further reading Anderson, Margot J. The American Census, A Social History. New Haven, Yale University Press, 1988. ISBN 0-300-04014-8 Anderson, Margot J. The American Census, A Social History, 2nd edition. New Haven, Yale University Press, 2015.
ISBN 978-0-300-19542-2 Anderson, Margot J. Encyclopedia of the U.S. Census. Washington, D.C., CQ Press, 2000. ISBN 1-56802-428-2. Dorman, Robert L. The Creation and Destruction of the 1890 Federal Census. American Archivist, 71, Fall Winter 2008, 352-83. Kruger, Stephen. The Decennial Census. 19 Western State University Law Review 1, Fall 1991, available at Heinonline. Subscription required. Shore, Paul. Counting Americans, How the U.S. Census Classified the Nation. New York, Oxford University Press, 2017. Lavin, Michael R. Understanding the Census, a Guide for Marketers, Planners, Grant Writers, and Other Data Users. Kenmore, N.Y., Epic Books, 1996. ISBN 0-89774-995-2. U.S. Department of Commerce, U.S. Census Bureau. Measuring America, the Decennial Censuses from 1790 to 2000. 2002 External links U.S. Census Bureau official website History of the U.S. Census Bureau Population profile of the United States, 2000 Historical Census of Population and Housing Reports 2010 Census Data National Historical Geographic Information System, a main source for freely downloading census data for the period 1790 through the present Integrated Public Use Microdata Series, the main source for census microdata for the period 1850 through the present Censuscope, from the Social Science Data Analysis Network Historical U.S. Census Browser, from the University of Virginia Library Census Findings, questions asked in each census year, from censusfinder.com How the Census Works, from HowStuffWorks, Inc. Sources of U.S. Census data, from MIT Libraries 1890 Census Supplement Bookset